Hey everyone, I'm coming to you on the morning of Pentecost Sunday. It's the day we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit well after the resurrection of Jesus and just as Jesus promised. So, we remember the coming of the Spirit and we continue our road on the road to character, the character of Christ in us, and we see it in fruit the outworking of the Holy Spirit in us, and today it's peace and patience. So let's start with our reading from the New Testament from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. It's, it's short. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against things like this. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passions and its desires. So if we live by the Spirit, let's not become arrogant and make each other angry or be jealous of each other. These are the words of God for the people of God. So can you imagine the incredible excitement of the disciples. They, they had heard about it. The women told them. The two on the road to Emmaus had told them that Jesus is alive, risen from the dead. And they're all talking about it. They're talking about it in a room with the doors locked and the windows locked. They're afraid. And suddenly, Jesus just shows up. Not a knock on the door. No climbing through a locked window. He just appears. Can you imagine the fear mixed with joy? Had I been there, I might have to imagine that I might think, wow, all those things he told us are true. They're real. Cool. So now this kingdom of God can finally get underway. Now, you can find that story in Luke chapter 24. And so as that was going on, what did Jesus say? It's in verse 49. Jesus said, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. He's going to send what he promised. That's what Jesus just said. Now, what was that? Hold on. Because he says, stay. Wait. Wait. The very first thing Jesus tells them to do is wait, be patient. And then 40 days later, after they waited, they stayed. And on this day, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And as we've been studying together these last few weeks, the fruit, the evidence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Last week, we started with love and joy. This week, we come to peace and patience. And I'll tell you what, for me, it's been quite the week. Actually, especially these last few days, I'd say these days have been kind of actually ironic. Ironic because as I am preparing messages about peace and patience, I spent most of an entire day struggling with peace and patience. It's not always a struggle, but that day it really, really was. I wanted to get something done, and in the time I wanted to do it, and other people's priorities got in the way. The technology didn't cooperate, and even the weather was against me. At least it felt that way. Do any of these things I wrestled with um, against really make any difference in the day? No, not really. It's just a minor adjustment in the order in which I get things done. And the few seconds or minutes longer that it took to get it done. Well, you see, the temptation throughout that was to stir the pot, make it boil, make the others feel just as much agita as I did. And that is hardly a recipe for peace. It revealed in me my need to grow and be more patient 
and have a more peaceful attitude. I need help, and for that I claim, yet not I, but Christ in me. How about you? It's so much easier, and I would even say natural, to go with the, the fighting, the obsession, the losing your temper, the competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness. Those actions, those actions named in Galatians chapter 5, it's easier to go that way. And it actually makes perfectly good sense. Paul called those ugly things the works of the flesh. What comes naturally and usually for the life that is in this body, of this broken, imperfect body and mind, of the natural world about us and which we're part of. So what do we have? We have human nature apart from the Spirit of God. The image of God controlling us, what do we get? Well, what happens without the Word of God, without the Spirit of God, we get nice words, nice ideas, even nice aspirations, and sometimes those aspirations can actually last for quite a long time, but ultimately, look around, and what we get is that long list of things that go wrong in Galatians 5, chapter 9, or verses 19 to 21, that are just plain painful to read. You know, arguments, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, just to name a few that show up there in that passage. And when we watch the news, we see those just about every day. We saw it this past week in Gaza Strip. We see it on our own streets in America in riots and crime. Shots fired out of an argument over the stupidest stuff. And if we're paying attention, we see it show up in our own homes, not the least of which are arguments and just getting totally stuck on something. Losing your temper, opposition, conflict, and just plain selfishness. And I rather suspect that my experience that I told you about as I was getting ready for this message, my impatience, my agitation, sounds awfully familiar to most of you listening. Yet the scripture we read says, the fruit of the Spirit, Christ at work in you, is first love and joy, and now peace and patience. So let's dig into these. What is it? What is peace and patience? And how do we get them? Peace. Peace, what is it? Well, first we think of peace as the absence of conflict. And I don't think that's exactly it. You see, mere absence of conflict never lasts. There, there might even be a, a negotiated truce, a ceasefire. But how long do you think that ceasefire in Gaza is going to last? that we saw last week. How long do you think, oh, that they'll be quiet from worry and fear that'll last inside me or you? Or how about peace, even in the sense of nations at peace? You know, there has to be the building of relationships, an active, intentional way of getting along, not just the absence of conflict. Peace, real peace, is a sense of well-being, of thriving. It's shalom. More than mere absence of conflict, the, the peace of which the scriptures speak, of, of which our world and which we need is more. It's wholeness, well-being, flourishing, especially peace of mind and peace between people. See, it's a promise from God. We can read it actually in the book of Leviticus in chapter 26. God says, I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. Or how about Psalm 29 verse 11? The Lord gives strength to his people and the Lord blesses his people with peace. Peace is a gift from God. But just as much a problem is the declaration of peace when there is no peace. 
They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. That's what the, Jer what the prophet Jeremiah wrote. Or how about talking about false prophets? They, they lead my people astray, says God, saying peace when there is no peace. And because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore, tell those who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. That's from the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 13. See, nothing good comes of it. It keeps the problem covered up with nothing truly solved, and sooner or later it just boils open and over. It happens on an international scale. We're thankful for the ceasefire this week in Gaza, but we hold our breath wondering just how long it's going to last. As of this moment, there's no riots on our streets in America, but we wonder when or if they're going to break out again. And the same might be said of a truce, a ceasefire, in an argument in any one of our homes, or even the arguments that we have in our, <laughs> in our own minds. No, the peace of which the scriptures speak is much more than just a lack of open conflict. It is wholeness, well-being, flourishing, especially peace of mind and peace between people. It's that walking and living in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have everything I need. Well, that's peace. But what about patience? This is, patience is kind of a strange word in English. We use the word patient. That's the word that we use to call people under the care of a doctor. You know, at the doctor's office, we're all called patients. Is that because they know that we're going to have to have patients because we sit there for a long time? <laughs> or, or could it be that we're called patients because we're going to have to wait for healing and restoration to come? Hmm, takes time. But actually, in English, the word patient comes out of a word meaning suffering or one who suffers. In English, it seems closer to the word in Greek that's usually translated endurance. You know, living under the pressure of a burden on top of you. But here, in Galatians chapter 5, the word that's used for patient literally means far feeling, keeping feelings at arm's length or further. In other words, waiting without feeling, waiting especially without being agitated. Okay, so we have these character qualities, these fruit of Christ in us through the Holy Spirit, peace and patience. And maybe we even get it. We understand that these are not in our nature as human beings. And, and we can even say that a clear lack of these character qualities of peace and patience in our lives is a warning sign that something is amiss in our life with Jesus. It's a pointer to the places in our lives where we have not yet given Christ free reign. So the question is, how do we get it? Well, first, it's open hands. Peace and patience are not character qualities that come from trying hard. You know, clenching a fist or bearing down or straining. It comes from open hands. Some time ago, I used to teach people how to use biofeedback to learn how to not have headaches teach people how to reduce chronic pain, and even to teach people how to lower blood pressure without medication. And what we learned in that time is that you can't make it happen by trying hard. It happens by letting go, by releasing, by open hands. And yet our natural reaction is to try hard, to clench our fists, to bear down, to strain. Without patience, we won't have patience. 
So let's start talking about patience. Patience comes largely with just being okay with waiting. Being okay with waiting has a lot to do with selfishness, you know, with recognizing and being okay and realizing that I'm not the center of the world, that I can't control everything. I have to be okay with waiting. So we start there, waiting and patience, far feeling. I did a search to find out just how many times that word wait is in the Bible. I found out that there were 99 times it's used in the Old Testament and 34 times in the New Testament. So here's just three verses from the Old Testament. There's Psalm 27 verse 14. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Did you hear it? Waiting brings strength. Or Psalm 37, 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. Wait. Even wait patiently. You've not seen the end yet. Yeah, pieces will come. Or how about Isaiah 40, verse 31? But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Waiting. Waiting. It's a lifelong thing through the times of soaring, of running, of walking, and yes, even just plodding step by step. But it is the Lord that renews your strength. We wait patiently. The source of our hope is what we see in the long run. We who trust in the Lord play the long game. Okay, so Old Testament, but what about New Testament? Let's try 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, God is patient. There's that word. Even describing God. God is patient with you, with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Now, James. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Now, to be honest, sometimes waiting on the Lord is like watching grass grow. When is it going to happen? Will the crepe myrtles ever come out this year? Patience, patience. So what do we do? What do we do to grow the fruit of the Spirit, the character qualities of peace and patience in our lives? I think Psalm 37 is a recipe for peace and patience. It says, don't get upset over evildoers. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong, because they will fade fast like grass. They will wither like green vegetables. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm. Farm faithfulness. Enjoy the Lord and he will give you what your heart asks. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust him. He will act and will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. Your justice like high noon, be still before the Lord and wait for him. Don't get 
upset when someone gets ahead. Someone who invents evil schemes, let go of anger and leave rage behind. Don't get upset. It will only lead to evil because evildoers will be eliminated. But those who hope in the Lord, they will possess the land. That's Psalm 37. Do you see those words? Trust, enjoy, commit, be still, wait, and let go. Let those words, the words of the psalm, roll over and over in your mind like a favorite song that keeps playing even the way when the radio is turned off. And I have to tell you, this psalm, almost line by line, carries the same message that is used in the biofeedback training I told you about a while ago. The fruit of the Spirit are first love, joy, peace, habits of the mind. And the first of the action fruits is patience, waiting. And I know that part, waiting, is incredibly hard for most of us. And that's why Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Do you hear it? Let the peace of Christ rule and the word there is literally umpire, referee. <laughs> yes, there will be contention, there'll be argument, there'll be discord, both in your inner being and between people and friends and, and family. And Paul urges us to let the peace of Christ umpire, referee in our hearts. Jesus is right there in the middle of the dispute, in the middle of the argument, and we are urged to let Jesus be the referee. We won't get it done on our own. So how do we do that? We can make the conditions right for the character of the qualities of Christ to grow in us, like a gardener. We can till the soil, we can water the crop, we can dig out the weeds. Here, like this. We can till the soil. We can stay in fellowship with other believers. Because this is not a solo sport. We are to spur each other on. Here's what it says in, in Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25. It says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Oh, that's the reason to come together to encourage one another, to spur one another on to these character qualities. It's just better together. Okay, so till the soil. Now water the garden. Read the Word of God. Read inspirational books that help open up the Bible to you, even, even movies that help guide us in our faith. The Word of Christ must live in us richly. That's Colossians verse three, or chapter 3, verse 16. So till the soil, water the garden, and then weed the garden. Actively dispute the messages from the world and sometimes false teaching from those who claim the name of Jesus. Sometimes dispute those things that just come in our minds. We'll have to talk about what those false messages might be some other time, but till then till then, till the soil, water the garden, and weed the garden. And, and lastly, I stand. And I hope you will stand with the Apostle Paul as we walk this road to character. The character of Christ in us. Love, joy, peace, and patience. I have been crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time that you've given to us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus in us and to see 
the fruit of your spirit in us grow as we continue to till the soil of our faith. Water the garden with your word and weed those things that are not from you. Lord, we especially come to you to this day when we're in a time when we definitely, definitely need the Spirit of Christ to place in us peace and patience. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this promise of the Holy Spirit in us to guide us, to guide us in our ways. In all these things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, hear this blessing from me. May the peace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ guard you, guide you, protect you, and save you even from those things at war in your soul that we would walk as light and life in this world. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen.